Hey everybody, I'm Justin Bone. And I'm Mike Bell. And this is the Bone and Zono Zone, where we are always on the lanes, off the charts, and on the mic. Yeah! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Bone and Zono Zone podcast. We have a very special episode today. We do. Welcome, everybody, and happy Memorial Day weekend to everybody as well. Hope everybody had a nice, safe holiday. Justin, what did you do this weekend? Yeah, I uh, went on a 10-mile bike ride yesterday. Ooh, sounds like And fun. we rode to a friend's house, had a campfire, and it was definitely a pretty good time. Sounds fun. Yeah, how, you feeling? how are you feeling today? Uh, actually not that bad. You know, the first like two or three miles, it was kind of uphill. It was kind of rough. But then, mm -hmm. uh, once I got past that point, I was just like, just kept going. I just kept going. Pain is weakness leaving the body. Yeah. I was just like, it doesn't matter how you feel. If you think it, just do it. That sounds, that's pretty motivational. And I, uh, I watched a, a guy who set the world record for long world's longest plank. He was 62 years old. I saw that guy. See, he's nuts. That guy. And he, for like, he ripped for like eight hours, right? Uh, and he was like, it doesn't matter how you feel. If you think that you can do it, you can do it. And I was just, I just kept saying that over, over and over in my head. And it just, I just was miles ahead of everybody else. That's what Amleto is going to have me doing in about two months. Oh my God. We, we start, we start the workouts next Monday. Oh God. Yeah. So with I, I'm neurotic. I have to start everything like on the first of the month or on like on a Monday. Yeah. So with the holiday being yesterday, um, I told him, Leto, we're going to start working out on the first. So next Monday, the first, I will officially be training under the tutelage of Leto Monticelli. So when I when I can't walk on Tuesday, we'll um, you just have to like wheel me to do the show on Tuesday. <laughs> okay, all right. all right. So let's get it going today. So what what do we got on the on the on the agenda for today? So first off, before we bring our guest in, we do want to remind everybody that or announce that Thursday in two days. We will have Bill O'Neill on the show. Mm -hmm. And this Saturday, we're also going to have a very oh. special episode with some breaking news from BuddiesProShop.com. So yeah. I'm going to leave it at that one. And if you guys stay tuned on our Facebook page, uh, you'll find out more about that one. Yeah, so we will be three shows this week. Today, Thursday, and the special one on Saturday night. So... Um, can we uh, introduce the guest? We've been keeping the guest waiting for a while. Go for it. So, there, Justin, there's certain people in the bowling world, I guess, that um, I've always wanted to meet and cross off the bucket list, and this is one of them. And for some reason, I was always like fearful to go approach this person because I thought, like, he was like, I don't know, I'm just a coward, I guess. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go into it. So, I, I don't know where to begin with the introduction because the resume is just probably one of the strongest ones of anybody we've had join us. So a two-time national champion with the University of Nebraska, a former collegiate bowler of the year and first team All-American at the University of Nebraska, 15-time member of Team USA, a former two-time U.S. amateur champion, national amateur champion, three-time world bowler of the year, member of the World Bowling Hall of Fame. As you can see, this is just going to keep going on for a couple of seconds here. Uh, she has won over 60 medals worldwide, holds two P uh, PBA Women's Series title of, um, titles, even won the Queens. In my opinion, Justin, probably the best female bowler in the past 20 years um, anywhere in the world. One hell of a mom, the one and only Deandra Aspady. Deandra, there what? she is. What is up, you guys? How are you? What a nice introduction. Thank you so much for that. And did I hear you say that? I was on your show before Bill O'Neill. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's yes. that's really making me feel good right now. Sorry, Bill. You are the first female to join the show. Oh my gosh, really? Yes. Thank you. That's yeah, amazing. You well, I really appreciate you guys reaching out, and I love what you're doing. I think bowling needs more bright lights, like like the show and. Um, you're offering something different than than what's out there, and I'm so excited to be so early into 
um, I'm sure some, uh, the show that will run for many, many, many years. Well, let's hope, let's hope it does. And thank you for giving us a couple minutes. Yeah, we actually started doing things like this before this whole thing started. We had done a few shows. Um, we did like six or seven shows before this whole thing started, just being basically a bowling podcast. Um, there wasn't really one besides that Flow Bowling did, and we thought our place was needed. So we decided to start doing that, and then we saw everybody very easily doing live streams, and, well, we said we could do it too. Yeah, but you know what? You, you're bringing your own thing. And I feel like there's enough space out there for a lot of really great bowling podcasts. And um, I think that you guys are really unique. So keep it um, up and keep getting really great guests and bringing your personality. And it's awesome. Thank you. I, I have the face for radio, though. So nobody wants to see my ugly bald head. <laughs> and um, Justin will agree. So uh, actually, no, when your hair grows back in, we'll be very thankful. Yeah, this is the quarantine. Uh, no barbershop in New Jersey hairdo, unfortunately. I know, man. I'm, I'm thinking about doing it. It's been a long time since I've had a haircut. <laughs> How are things in Chicago with like the whole quarantine lifestyle? Yeah, we're still um, te technically in like a stay-at-home order. So um, they're, I think they're going to announce at the end of this week that we can leave <laughs> um, and maybe be in groups of like 10 or less. But, you know, sh Chicago being such a big city, it's not not like New York City because New York City is a lot worse um, than anywhere in the U.S. But it's it's hard to control something like this in a big city. So um, I've I've honestly been just staying home and really enjoying quality family time. And um, it's really interesting because normally I have so many things on my plate. I have like 548 things that I need to, I, every day, like I got to go there. I got to pick this up. I got to do this. I got to go practice. I got to work out. I got to coach. I got to do all these things. And so I have so many choices. And this quarantine has sort of changed me a little bit. When I wake up in the morning, it's kind of a relief that I don't have choices. I know what I'm going to work on and I know where I'm going to be. And that in literally the first time in my entire life that I can say that. So I'm really, really trying to focus on the positives of this. Not bad. Yeah, we've, uh, we're actually in the process of moving. Currently we are homeless. Oh no. So we sold you, our house last are week. Are you on the streets right now? Yeah. Hey, so, internet? Yeah, he did yeah, the street with a Brunswick banner behind him. <laughs> that's, how, that, that's how you find the Bone family. Just look for the big B on the other side of the street. Yeah, so we're homeless right now. We sold our house last week and hopefully things are going to close on Friday. So we're going to start moving this weekend. Where are you moving? Uh, uh, the other side of town, about 20 minutes from where we currently live. So a oh, cool. little, little more countryside, some deer in the backyard, all the things. Yeah, we don't, don't talk about deer, Justin. You know, oh, sorry, Mike, but yeah, mom, I, I, I hit a deer in my brand new truck last week. So we don't want to discuss the oh deer. My word. Gosh, no way. Are you okay? I'm fine. Yeah. The, the truck was uh, not even three weeks old. Oh, so, my gosh. They knew. I'm, yeah, they knew. Thanks, They're Justin. Like, and, and, after this one? And let's play a game really quick. Where where was I coming from when I hit the deer? Uh, well, my house. Um, really? Yeah. Like, and we wanna, a lot of places. And we want to thank Parker for keeping me past the quarantine. <laughs> if it wasn't for Parker BSing with me in the driveway, I would have been home by curfew. <laughs> we know where he does. At least we're okay. We have a curfew in New Jersey, and Parker kept me past curfew. So thanks, oh Parker. I appreciate that. How does he feel about that? And he don't care. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he don't care. He's not accountable. No, he's not accountable. All right, Justin, let's get into it. All right, so wait, what's our first question? Never mind. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bring I'm it. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. I've done this a couple of times. I've got all the answers, I think. So what started you? We're going to go right into your Elite Youth Tour. What started you, or what was the main reason that you started that? Obviously, yeah, there's well, a lot it, of junior bowling, mm -hmm, but yeah. it's been what, really, youth bowling has been always really close to my heart. But it's funny because I remember it really vividly. It was I was on a plane in 2012, flying to the Queens, and I thought to myself in the air, and I was doing a lot of coaching and clinics with Jason Balmonte, and and I thought we should start a youth tour, and so I landed. I called him and I'm like, we should start a youth tour. And he's like, okay, let's do it. And I was like, I don't, I don't have a clue. I know how to bowl them, but I have no idea how to run tournaments, but we'll figure it out. And he was really um, 
helpful at the beginning. He's not so much involved anymore for obvious reasons, he's a little bit busy, but he really helped to get it off the ground. And so in 2000, and I ended up winning the Queens. I was on the way to the Queens, came up with that idea, and then I won that Queens. And then, uh, I, so it was just overall a really, really good week. Um, and then we just, you know, you figured it out. I really wanted to have a nonprofit, a 501c3. And that was really important for people to know that I'm really truly doing this for the kids. And um, in over, let's see, since 2012, 13, we've raised over $220,000 in scholarships. And honestly, I've done a lot of really cool things in my career, but that is one that I'm the most proud of, to be able to impact other people's lives and to help them get into college or help them be a better bowler and a better person. Like that's really what fills me up and gives me so much happiness. So I've done some really cool things, but the Elite Youth Tour, and right now it's in the Chicagoland area, but you know, well not right now because we can't have tournaments, but every month we were holding them and it's just so amazing to grow with these families and see these kids grow up year to year and then they meet on the Elite Youth Tour and they go to Junior Gold and they're staying together at the hotel. And you know, it's just, we've formed such an amazing community of people that is so awesome and so fun. So then your area was definitely lacking the tour that it needed. I mean, you know, there's there's always room for more. I, uh, I, ne I never want to compete with other tours around here. There's a really strong Illinois tour. There's a tour in, in Wisconsin that's strong. And I really try to be careful that we're not overlapping them. You know, my, our yeah. tournaments are on Saturday. A lot of theirs are on Sunday. So um, I'm conscious of that because I really, I think there's space for everyone. And, and I'm not out there to compete with any tour. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's working. So I feel like it, I'm, I'm providing them an opportunity that they didn't have before. Yeah, so I actually had a lot of behind-the-scenes help this year with my dad's tournament. And after sitting there for a month of entering entries, doing the masking units, getting everything set up for that weekend, that was a huge weekend for us. And I learned that tournament directors actually do a lot more than just sit at, behind a desk. Yeah. And that was one tournament, right? Yeah. That's just one tournament. So we're doing it every month. And I have this small team of amazing volunteers. I mean, I'm dreaming of a day where we can get so much funding that I can hire people full time to work right. the youth tour that I can pay as their job. Like that would be like my dream scenario. But yeah, it's a lot of work and I have some really great people that just, they show up month to month for me and for the kids and they expect nothing. And I think that that's important to recognize the work that goes into it, right? It doesn't just happen. Yeah, we didn't no, have that. It doesn't. No, and we didn't have that growing up. I mean, Deandra and I are pretty close in age. Um, at least here in Jersey, we had JBTs and, you know, we didn't have other like avenues like you're discussing, like with your elite youth tour um, yeah. and other stuff. We just had literally just, you bowl Saturday morning juniors, mm -hmm. we bowled in high school and that was really it. We didn't have those other opportunities to go really go out there and like branch out and whatnot, but this is great. And um, it, it would love to, to see you come out East and bring mm -hmm. your game out East. It would really be good. There's with him yeah. and his following that Justin has, yeah. there's, ton of youth bowlers out here why not like i'm, oh, I'm yeah. so down for that i know being in chicago right now like kids kids are coming from nebraska pennsylvania florida there's there's kids that fly in some maryland um mm -hmm. south dakota and so it's it's really cool i feel like wherever you're holding like a, a good tournament like if you build it they will come and i built it and they came well and just to <laughs> yeah. touch on on dad on his on his father's tournament this is year 21, right? We're doing 21 uh, this year? This year will be number 21, yeah. Wow, oh, amazing. So last year, was, wasn't it the first year you guys had, an, you had international players come in for it, right? Yeah, we had uh, the uh, one kid from Germany come in, which was really unique. And, I mean, last year was definitely a huge event for us. I mean, we just introduced two day a uh, two-day event like two years ago or mm -hmm. three years ago. And well, it took off from there. I said, mom, we got to make it a three day event. We got to change the format. It was just too similar to the other events. And uh -huh. we changed it, made it a three day event. And now this year it's going to be a four day event. Oh, so, that's amazing. Yeah. So 
so you like what what's like the formats in your stuff for for the kids? Like what do, what do you do like Me? format wise? Yeah. So like what like your elite youth tour? Like what are your formats? Yeah, I think that the most important thing that I've really tried to instill in the elite youth tour is that um, I want to get these kids ready for what they may see in the future. And so we're always putting down how hard patterns, and I mean sometimes they're really hard. And um, we're always using different formats and different semifinals and finals formats because I really I don't want them to get comfortable with just one thing. And so for me, I think my favorite format that we do is the eliminator. So we'll have qualifying and then we'll make a cut and then there'll be some more games and there'll be another cut to the top four in every division. And we have U12, um, you know, boys and girls, U15, U20. Um, and I love seeing like four people at one time that have a chance to like win the tournament. And then they bowl, or maybe the, the top seed will get a bye and then there's three that start and the, they pull one game and one drops out. I always liked that format mm -hmm. when when I was bowling, like the like the Omega Bug, like, the, like the, the Eliminator when you have like yeah. the high game. I always bowled really well, and maybe that's that's because I, I always felt like no matter who was bowling, I have a chance. Yeah. So let's go back into your bowling now. Let's 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 put the kids onto the back burner for a couple of seconds. Let's talk about your career. So went to Nebraska. Um. So again, I, I bowled a school in Moorhead, so obviously you're familiar with. Our program, we had some pretty good players there in Moorhead. Yeah. Um, were there? Chris, any, I'm sorry, Chris Esther. I Chris left the year I got there, which is was a senior oh. year, and that was Kelly's last year, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So, did you have any other schools that wanted you, or was Nebraska just the number one and only one you wanted to go to? It was not actually um, in high school. I thought that I knew exactly where I was going because my sister Cassie is three years older than me and I literally did everything she did. And she won, I wanted to win. Um, she went somewhere, I wanted to go there. And so she chose Wichita State. And in high school, I got to watch her bowl and compete. And um, I just, I remember how much I loved watching her bowl. And when it was time for me to start thinking about college, I said to myself, like I could, I would love to go and bowl with her for a year. We would cheer a year, um, but then she wouldn't be there anymore. Or, you know, at that time, nobody knew me as Deandra. Everybody knew me as Cassie's little sister, and that was hard. Uh, so I remember going up to Coach Straub at the University of Nebraska at one of Cassie's tournaments, and I, I introduced myself, and I was like, yeah, I just um, I, I wanted to inquire about some information on Nebraska, and he's like, really and i was like yeah i mean i haven't made a decision because he thought that i was going to wichita and then he took me out for a visit an, an official visit we saw university of nebraska and all of its glory and how they treat the athletes there and i know i would have loved going to wichita and it was such a strong program and it still is but if i wanted to become deandra i knew that i needed to do my own thing and so going into college I don't know if a lot of people really like knew me yet, knew my name, but when I was done with college, everyone did. And so that was one of the best decisions I made in my career, in my life. I won two national championships with my team. In fact, the first one was my freshman year and we won it in Wichita, which was like bittersweet for me because my sister Cassie never won a national championship and I won one my freshman year at a different school. So that, that was uh, just super ironic. And, um, you know, I was student athlete of the year at Nebraska. That means all sports. And that is something that is really important to me um, because it was academics, it was athletics, and it was all, all sports considered. And it was the first time that bowling was recognized with other sports, other NCAA sports. And it meant so much to me that I could do that for, for bowling, for our, our team. And, um, and I don't think a bowler has won since. So... Um, that's really special to me. But yeah, University of Nebraska, I mean, college bowling is some of the best, I'm sure that you would agree, some of the best times, some of the, you know, the, it's just so intense and you go into those buildings and you just like, it's so electric. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed it so much. I'm so grateful for those coaches. I felt like I really learned how to bowl there. They taught me, they really believe in fundamentals and I really worked on my fundamentals um, for a very long time. And I think that then when I left there, I was able to make 
my game, my game. And I was able to use what I learned and, and deandrify it, you know, and, and make it, make it what it is. And I'm so grateful for, for their coaching. That, that's and, awesome. You, you made that two natural championships. Yeah, two natural championships. So you had to step out of like the, your sister's shadow basically and just become your own totally. person. Yeah. And, and, it, and it worked. I mean, she was a great role model. She had great, you know, shoes for me to step right into. We were both on Team USA for a couple of years, but um, it's like a blessing and a curse when you have somebody so close to you in your life that is doing all the good things. They're pushing you because I remember when I was a little girl, I'm talking like maybe nine or 10 and I went into um to practice, my sister would bowl so much more than me. Every night we would practice in middle school and high school, every single night from 9.30 till midnight. And it was super normal for me then. As a mom now, I'm just like, that is that is actually crazy that you let me do that. But it was the only time we can get le uh, lanes after leagues. And so we would go and my sister um, would just really put in the time. And I wasn't quite there yet. And then I saw her winning and I was like, oh, well, I want to win. So maybe I should put in more time. And then I really understood the concept of you, you get out what you put in and that makes all the difference in the world. And, and there's another former national champion chiming into the chat right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is, yeah, I don't quite know that girl. She, bowled with, right um, she, she, when did Leslie bowl? She bowled with Chrissy for, um, I think a couple of years. That's you, Justin. You you know the family tree uh, more well, than I do. And here we go. I mean, it was I, like I it can't say a wrong like, number because I can't make her sound old. Ninety six um, or ninety seven. You know, uh, no, no. It was she graduated in eighty seven, so she bowled eighty seven to ninety one. Yeah. That's your yeah. aunt, Aunt Chrissy. No, or, mom did. Oh, mom. Okay. Yeah, your aunt bowled with my sister. Yeah. Everybody knows everybody. And that's, yeah, that's, I mean, that's where we met there. I, I remember yeah. meeting there. Yeah, bowling's so, a small world. Mm -hmm. and, and there it is. There is the answer, 87 to 91. Okay. So Team USA, 15-time member of Team USA. So obviously those late-night practice sessions, they worked. So Yeah, you know, I remember, uh, I remember being 12 years old. I came from a, a small town in Indiana, Dyer, Indiana, and I remember thinking, I want to be one of the best bowlers in the world. And I came from this small town. So people would look at me like, who do you think you are that you think you can be the best in the world at anything? But I was just crazy enough to actually believe that I could. And in my twenties, I was three time world bowler of the year. And so I'm just like a perfect example of you. It doesn't matter where you come from. Like you get to choose your own success. It doesn't just happen. You have to find the resources, find the coaches and put in like more hard work than anybody out there. But you get to choose that, and that is so empowering. So, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good line right there. It is. And um, so with all the Team USA stuff, do you have a specific event that one sticks out or one medal that you won that was like, like the highlight of those 15 times on Team USA? Oh, man. I have so many. But yes, just we know. bowling. We know. I think bowling on a team with like, <laughs> Linda Barnes, Carolyn Dorn Ballard, um, Leanne Holzenberg, um, Kim Kearney, people that I grew up watching. And then I was on their team and I was like, and I like, I literally have chills now just talking about it because that was really special for me. Um, I think one huge moment in my career was my very first world championship. And I was a kid, I was 19 years old and I was in college. My, my freshman year, I missed three weeks of college to bowl in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates for the world championships. And it was like my first time out there. And it was the first time I, I learned that I had a lot to learn. I mean, I didn't kill it there at all, but um, it was such a great opportunity. But what happened there was Kelly Kulik won the gold medal in singles. And that watch, I like, I have vivid memories of watching her on the podium, getting her medal and, and singing the national anthem and thinking, that's what I want. I want to feel what that feels like. And she was such an inspiration to um, to me and many other girls. But that was really monumental in my career because of somebody like Kelly. She showed me that it was possible, you know, and bowling with Shannon O'Keefe and Stephanie Johnson and just 
the memories. We used to go to a training camp in Colorado Springs where other Olympic athletes would train. And that was really special to be able, like Michael Phelps was there one year when we were there. And we saw like um, gymnasts that were at the Olympics. And uh, that was really special because, you know, bowling, it's sometimes hard to get the respect that we deserve. And being in places like that, you really did feel respected. You felt like you were just like them. You were at the high, you were at the top of your sport, just like they were at the top of their sport. And so I don't know if I can pick, like, I mean, I won the master's event back-to-back -back world championship. And that was really special to me. Um, I won in Malaysia in 2003. In fact, funny story in 2003, I was bowling um, and I was bowling really well. And somebody came up to me and they're just like, did you see this kid bowl with two hands? And I was like, in 2003, nobody was really bowling with two, with two hands. And I was like, what do you mean, like, two hands? Like, what? how is he bowling? Is he bowling, like, like, like this? Like, like nobody really, I, haven't, I hadn't seen it yet. And they're like, yeah, he's from Australia. And so I, like, made my way to go and watch him bowl. Nobody knew him. And I thought, I think that's really funny because I, I sometimes bring it up to him. I'm like, remember that time that we bowled a world championship? And nobody knew you, but everybody knew me because it's so opposite now in the world of bowling. But that was like where Jason and I became friends that long ago, before he was really anybody. Um, and it was really, uh, that was that was a funny part in my Team USA career too. I mean, there's just so many. It's really hard to, to just choose one. I've had really great coaches. I mean, my first coach ever was Palmer Falgren. And then to be coached by Fred Borden and Jerry Edwards that meant a lot. And then on to Rob Ross and Gordon Vatican was a coach. So even though I didn't go to uh, Wichita, I still got coached by Gordon and his um, mental game coaching at our Team USA camp. So Team USA really, um, really enriched my life. And at a time where I was so grateful because I just graduated from college, I, I was on Team USA all through college. But then when I graduated, I was ready to go out on tour because I'd watched it and I was so eager and ready. And then the PWBA folded that year, right when I graduated. And I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Like I was looking forward to going out there, but Team USA kind of carried me along um, and filled that void. And I didn't really, I don't feel, and a lot of people have asked me, do I feel cheated? Because I would have, I think I would have a lot more titles, um, mm -hmm. professional titles if there was a tour right up when I got out of college. Um, but I don't really feel cheated because I was able to travel the world and go to over 30 countries and meet friends that I still have and win and, you know, be the best in, in my sport uh, in just a different way that if I was on tour, I wouldn't have had any of those opportunities because at that time, you could not be on Team USA and a professional bowler. It was Team USA was just amateurs only. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that, um, I don't think, I mean, I mean, sometimes I wonder, like, what if, what, what would my resume look like? But when I look at my resume now or the things that I've been able to do and see and, and the people I've been able to meet, I have no regrets. Yeah. And, and looking at your resume last night, I was just like, how do I fit all your accomplishments into like a 30 or 60 second introduction? I'm like, this well, can't happen. You. It, it can't happen. I'm like, this is just, this is nuts. Like we, we had, we had Barnes about a month ago and your resume blows Barnes out of the water. <laughs> well, it's just different. I mean, you know, Chris is, Chris is a legend. So I got one really quick, Justin, if you don't mind. So did Go you ever it. feel like because you were a bowler and, and, and a female, I hate to say this, but you were like slighted or looked upon, like you were shunned upon because of the sport you played and of your gender. Did you ever feel like you were like kind of like with that, like, you know, um, it's a good question. Uh, no, because anytime I had a chance to talk about bowling to anybody that wasn't a bowler, I took that opportunity. But I didn't just say I'm a professional bowler or I bowl for a living. I go another step. And so I loved meeting people like on planes when we'll just strike up conversation and they'll be like, what do you do? And I tell them, they're like, what? You can do that for a living. I would always be like, yeah, let me tell you about it. And then I would tell them about the oil patterns and bowling ball dynamics and and how it paid for my college and I got a full ride scholarship. And then all of a sudden they go from like thinking what whatever they were thinking about bowling to looking at it in a totally different light. And I think if all bowlers did that, 
then we, we would get more respect more often. But no, I never felt slighted. I always felt super proud of what I, I, I love that we, I took this like niche sport and, but niche, but everybody bowls. Like everybody has a bowling story. And that's the thing. Everybody I ever talked to that was an, a non-bowler, I would tell them what I, what I do. And they would have a story every single time. And so that is the power of bowling, right? It connects people. It's a memory. It's, oh, I would go every Thanksgiving with my family or, oh yeah, my husband and I, we used to go on dates bowling. Like, doesn't matter who you are. I have never met a person without a bowling story. And I think there's something to be said for that. And, and then I tell them that, you know, that's not the type of, that's not the level I'm bowling at. I'm, I'm glad that bowling can offer all these different levels of, oh my gosh, you can go with your family and go on a date. And, you know, I, I love that. But then it gave me an opportunity to be like, look at also what I can do. I'm traveling the world competing bowling. And the game that I always used to play when I meet people um, is that, you know, I would make them guess what sport. I, I would tell them I'm a professional athlete. What sport do I play? And Justin, you should do this. You know, you'll, you're going to start traveling a lot more. You're going to meet a lot of people. And it's a fun little game because um, I'll try to have them guess and they never get it in the first 10 guesses. And then I'll give them clues like, well, I know that you've done this. I don't know you, but I know you've done it. Um, there's a ball, you know, it's, and I'll eventually like drop like it's indoor and then they'll get it. And I don't know. I just, I, I feel, and I have always felt so proud to be a, a bowler. Well, we all do. We all do. Long that. answer for your short question. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> We, we like it when people talk a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Less thinking on our end. You got the right person then. I can go on and on. <laughs> so before we get into our next one, we actually have a question from my mom. Oh, hi. Hi, Leslie. <laughs> We've been cooking a lot in the past few months. What is your favorite meal? <laughs> oh, man. Um, the chef just came down, too. How ironic. But, um, I, man, John has been killing it lately. Usually he goes into a restaurant and he cooks or he manages the team as the executive chef here in Chicago. So we don't get to see him very much. And then when we do, um, he's tired and he'll come home from work. Um, and I'm not going to ask him to cook because he was just at work all day um, around food. And so we've had him home since March. And it has been amazing because he's been cooking every night and um, teaching my kids how to cook. To answer the question, like, oh, a favorite meal. I don't know. You know, he's been using the grill a lot lately, and it's it's an amazing grill. Um, yesterday, he killed it. Um, I don't know. I really, I I love, like, ribs and corn on the cob, but I also yes. love sushi. Oh. And um, I really love all foods except mushrooms, <laughs> to be honest. Okay. Okay. It's the only food. You, you said right. You said one, I, I agree with the ribs and the potatoes and the corn and all that. And then I was like, sushi. I was like, wow, you just went oh, to yeah. two completely different ends. And I'm like, wow, that's a hard to, that's a hard pick between no, both of those. I know, because they're so different. I don't eat them together. Don't worry. No, not me Ever. either. I hope, I hope Mike doesn't, but Mike no. does more yeah. things. So Thanks, Justin. Appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. So you obviously won some women's series titles, the Queens, and even won a doubles title in there with Brian Voss then almost like disappeared. What happened? Where'd you go? What'd you do? Um, well, I decided that I would fulfill my biggest goal in life. And that was to be a mom. Right. And I've always dreamed of having a family. And luckily I met my husband my freshman year of college. So we've been together for a very long time. <clears throat> and luckily in my twenties, we were able to travel a lot together. And so I knew that when I was getting closer to 30, that I wanted to um, to prioritize that because it would have been very easy to put it off. And in fact, I remember that conversation that I had with John and we were sitting on our couch and I'm like, you know, there's just not going to be the perfect time for you because you're working a lot. Like he was working 16 hour days, you guys. And I was gone a lot traveling. And there's just, there was not going to be a perfect time 
where it's like, oh, now's a good time. Let's fit it in right now. Um, and and that was okay because I was ready. I'm like, I was so proud of where I, I got to in my career. And I wasn't going to give it up. I, it was just going to, it was going to pivot. And I was so ready for it to pivot because being a mom was always my biggest goal in life over anything that I've ever wanted. And so, um, yeah, in 2010, I had Madden. And I did go through a little bit of like, who am I? Like, I, for so long, wanted to be one of the best bowlers in the world. And then I decided to pivot and to think, okay, well, I don't need that anymore. Um, I want to be a mom. And I still want to compete. And I think that I can win. But I was feeling a little bit mediocre at all the things because I'm, I had this new thing to juggle in my life that was a really big thing. And so I was traveling and competing and still trying to be a good mom. And um, I think that was a little bit of a struggle. But then I won the Queen. And Madden was about 14 months. And then I, it was sort of like justification for myself that I was like, it's going to be okay. In whatever capacity that I want this to be, it's going to be okay. And I don't need to feel the pressure of being the best anymore and that I could scale back a little bit, still be respected for what I've done. Nobody will ever take that away from me, but really focus on, on my family and coaching because I have a passion for coaching and youth bowling. And, you know, I knew I was going to have another baby and I did three and a half years later. So um, I think that is really important, especially for women. It's hard to be an, a, a female athlete because we're the ones that have to stop. Our bodies change. We have the baby. We have to get our bodies back into a strong shape. And so I think that's something that not a lot of people talk about, especially women, um, and that it's okay to pivot because I feel like when you are at the top of anything you in your mind think you're going to just be there forever and there's always going to be younger people and people that are prioritizing it differently than you are and, and it's actually okay that you let go of that need to want to be the best and that's that's really what your calling is and, and what your passion is and where your heart is going but it's also okay to pivot and to change your life and there's no shame in that. And I felt like in the, in the beginning, I was like, uh, I lost a little bit of my identity. But then I had kids and I understood my life. And I was like, this is what I'm meant to be. I did that and I did it well and I'm proud of it. And I'll still compete. And I think I could still win. And I know I'm a good coach. And I am providing all these opportunities for youth bowlers. Um, and so your life evolves as you evolve. That's awesome. So you're not an entrepreneur. You're a mompreneur, I believe yeah. is the term, right? So, and, and you're talking about your kids. So you've worn many hats with the USBC. You're a world-renowned coach, public speaker. You're now my friend. <laughs> you started your own clothing line. <laughs> I, oh, she's off the bucket list now, Justin, so that's done. <laughs> you started your own bowling uh, clothing line, International Art of Bowling. Now you started Beyond the Lanes. Yeah. And what is it? Plug it, tell us what it is, and let, let it rip. Yeah, I'm happy to. So Beyond the Lanes is something that I've thought about for a long time, but my life is so busy. I have had no time to put my head down and focus on this. And at the beginning of this year, before all this happened, I came up with this idea of, like, I really, I know, I, like, really tapped into myself and opened myself up, and I... I really knew that this next step, because I'm always looking for like, what's next? How can I help? How can I be in service to people and to bowlers? And I just knew that the Elite Youth Tour is so special, but that's making kids better bowlers. I really want to work with bowlers beyond the lanes because I feel that I have gotten to where I have in my career, not just on the lanes. Like I practice more than anybody out there. I learned the game, I understood the equipment, I lost, I like learned everything on the lanes that that is important to become a champion. But really what I learned beyond the lanes was way more important than, than what I learned, like keeping my elbow in and not pulling down from the top. You know, it's the things that allowed me to become a leader and to manage my whole being and um, my, you know, with a mental game, but also just accountability and authenticity and being and showing up like 100% you. 
you know, it's the things and I realized and I recognized that and I was like, how can I teach that? Because that is so important to becoming a great bowler and everybody wants to be this great bowler, but they're not putting in the work beyond the lanes into themselves. So I hired a sports, um, a leadership, not a sports psychologist, a leadership psychologist, because I had all these thoughts in my head and all of these lessons that I learned through bowling, but I needed somebody to help me organize them. So, and that's how serious I am about this. I didn't slap this idea together. I like, I went through all the channels. I hired people um, and I created, and I, and I wrote this curriculum, this Beyond the Lanes Academy that I just announced just last week. So this is like the first um, public broadcast that I'm talking about it, uh, Beyond the Lanes Academy. You can find it at beyondthelanes.com and learn more about it there. But essentially it's six week Tuesdays with me for six weeks. And every week I'm going to be focusing on a lot of different um, elements, goal setting and the things that I learned in, and I used in my career that, that allowed me to crush my goals um, and also authenticity. And like, you know, when you walk into a group of people talking about your friend, how, how you can truly stand up for yourself and not worry about them talking about you and being you all the time and that's really hard i think for all bowlers not just youth bowlers i wrote i thought this was going to be just geared towards youth and i think it will be but also i have people already signing up and joining the academy that are coaches that are um, college bowlers that are moms you know everyone that wants to translate this to a higher average on the lanes needs to work on themselves beyond lanes and so i put together this program there's a lot, there's a lot that go, that went behind it. I, since, since this court team, which like, to be honest, it started um, like March 17th for us. The Belmontes came and stayed with us. And that was the last time that we were like hanging out with people really. Um, they came and they stayed. And this was right at the time where it's like, this, things are getting weird. Like stuff in Chicago is closing. Restaurants are closing. Um, and then I had a chance to talk to Jason about this idea. And then they left and then, Ever since they left, March 17th, every day of the week, I wake up, I get my kids ready to do their um, the remote learning, and I put my head down the entire day. And so I've put in probably 400 hours of working on this, this curriculum and this offering, this product that I'm so excited to get out there because it's so close to my heart. So I hope that people that are watching if you have questions, you can email me, deandresbeatty at gmail.com. It's an opportunity to really work with me pretty intimately and grow your goals, crush your goals, understand your weaknesses, your strengths, how to make your weaknesses your strengths, um, how to follow through. Because I think, you know, in life, there's so many people that don't follow through and they don't show up and, um, and how to be a better teammate. And how to also, if you're in high school, how to get recruited for college and what college coaches are looking for. What type? Because it's not just, oh, you average 210, 220, then, you know, you're going to make the team. Like, they're looking at the bowler as a whole. And um, I don't know if anybody in bowling has ever really tackled that side. So I'm excited to bring it. And I hope that people listening are excited. I hope that you email me with questions. Beyondthelanes.com learn more. You can sign up today. On Friday, the price goes up. So right now it's just $3.97 for six weeks of me on Tuesday nights. A lot of like worksheets and activities that we're going to do together. A lot of follow up, a private Facebook group. Like it's going to be our own little club of people. So I am so excited. That's awesome. I, that sounds pretty good. I, I might have to sign up for that myself. Mom, if uh, you're still watching, uh, we'll talk about it after. Yes. Yes, please. All right. So you did, before we get into our 10 frames of questions, I have one question that is very different, um, not only in our state, but across the U.S. We're remote learning um, in stages. I mean, it was the first two weeks, and now it's basically been one long thing. We'll have Zoom meetings twice a week in some classes. Some meetings, they'll just post the assignment. So your kids are 10 and six, six? Mm -hmm. wow that was pretty good yeah um, good job. so what 
how is their remote learning going on from obviously compared to a junior in high school to their age? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Jersey's in um, kindergarten and, you know, she's just learning how to read. So she has her meeting with her teacher and the class at 11, just till 1130. And then that's so she, they're in a Montessori school and the Montessori school. They have mixed classrooms. So she's in a class with three year olds, four year old, four or five and six year olds. She's the oldest now. She started when she was three, so she started as the youngest. So for a half hour, they meet with the whole class. And then 11.30, it's just the kindergartners. And they work um, with their teacher on like an activity. And then they are expected to do other things. And luckily, it's not like 1984 because everything's online now. And so right. they have these apps that they learn and they work on their math skills through something called Dreambox. They're using... Um, my son Madden is using something called Lexia with his um, like English, um, just like comprehension and stuff. Um, she also has, she practices violin. So she, her violin teacher is Zoom, you know, Zoom calls once or twice a week, working on that. Um, my son, who's almost 10, is very, like they're very like independent kids in, in most part because of this Montessori school. And so he'll get a work plan. And on the work plan, it's all the works that he has to do for the week. And so it tells you, it directs you, like, go and do this. Here's the link. Um, and obviously, it's way different than what it would be in school. But it's kind of working for them. And they're very, um, like, last night, I was putting my daughter to bed. And, she, and you know, we had yesterday off because of Memorial Day. And she was just like, I can't wait for school tomorrow. And I was like. That's amazing. That's so great that they, uh, it's not a drag for them. They, they really do enjoy learning. But as a junior in high school, like, I, how are you learning? Like, what math are you doing now? Uh, calculus. Like, how do you learn calculus on Zoom? So she'll actually give us, so she'll do it very similar to what she did in class. Luckily, I had her freshman year. So, like, I kind of can relate to how she does it. So she'll have her notebook out, do it color coded markers one page at a time. She'll go over the notes, explain it, and we'll do that twice a week for an hour. Oh, seriously. <laughs> do you want me to come over and train them? I've trained mine very well. <laughs> <laughs> Yours might be too. Yeah, we'll do that twice a week, and then yeah. she'll give us some assignments to do on our own. But the, is it hard? Yeah, is it hard bit, for you to I'll, like to stay motivated? A little bit. And um, I'm not going to deny it. <laughs> well, this is this is business. You know, th oh, this yeah. comes first. But. Yeah, yeah, entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But obviously, the school stuff does come first. Um, yeah. But it it is difficult because I'm one that once someone teaches it to me and I can ask the questions that I need to. Yeah. I don't need you ever again. Mm -hmm. But obviously, with that not being in a classroom and it being all on Zoom, Sorry. it's definitely a little difficult. But yeah. Yeah, it's great. And then your your bowling, like how are you how are you dealing with that? I mean, high school season was over. Yeah, high school had ended. High school for us ends very early. It ends mm -hmm. in the middle of February. We had our state individuals on Valentine's Day this year. Oh, okay. And well, that luckily, was, I mean, that, that was cutting it pretty close because if it was a little later. I yeah, know. I know a bunch of my friends in Pennsylvania whose who their state championships got canceled, and then. In New York, their state championships got canceled. And I mean, we all bowl together. Like New York, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, like we all bowl. We go up there and bowl. They'll come here and bowl. We'll go there. I mean, we all bowl together. So, I mean, it sucks to see them lose, lose out, especially yeah. like one of our friends who's a senior who lives on Long Island, Amanda Njokas. I mean, her senior year, she's been on the team six years. Yeah. And can't bowl state championship her senior year. I so, know. yeah, a lot of there's been a lot of heartbreak. And that's another reason why. I wanted to provide an opportunity for bowlers um, to to do this digitally, you know, this beyond right. the lanes idea because there's been so much heartbreak with like junior gold being canceled, collegiate nationals and sectionals was canceled, and just like these the, these bowlers are just like they can't really get a break. So I, I really wanted to provide an opportunity to to still work on your game, not on the lanes. Yeah. So. Before we get into our 10 frames of questions, before we get, get rid of all the negative talk, um, we do want to let everybody know that the 21st Parker Bowen III Scholarship Tournament, like we said earlier, 
is our first four-day weekend, September 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, Friday to Monday, Labor Day weekend. Put it down in your calendars. Uh, stay tuned on our Facebook page. We will have more information coming very soon. And I'll be sure to, to send my Elite Youth Tour um, kids over, and I'll post it in our Facebook. Let, make sure they know, too. Yes, do that. <laughs> and, and Justin, don't worry. I won't say my famous line about Parker's tournament. <laughs> you just did. Um, who, who led qualifying in the very first ever Parker Bowling Third Scholarship? Ooh. Was that you? Uh, it was. So you're claiming I think six in a row. Well, not really, but. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So how'd you finish? I finished second. Oh, oh that's still good. Yeah, it was, it's all right, but you know, you, you take, for every loss, you take something, right? And yeah, you sure. learn what you did in the loss and don't do it again in the next event. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Is? No. Oh. No, I, no, no, I did not win. So, all right. So let's go to the final 10, Justin, shall we? Yeah, I think so. I think it's about that time. And uh, all right. So I'll let you take the wheels on this one. So we go one on one with me and I have 10 random questions. Anything goes. And uh, are you ready? I don't know. Am I? Oh, they're not bad. Oh, they're not that bad. They're, they're not that bad. I, I change them up every week. So they're not that bad. All right. So number one, you mentioned a bunch of them earlier. Who is the most influential coach you've ever had in your career? Ooh. Bill Straub. Mr. Straub from Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. he really broke it down for me. I went, I went to college and I hooked the ball, but he really taught me how to actually like fundamentally do the right thing to hook the ball. Like what I was doing, my ball was always hooking early. So uh, yeah, they, Bill and Paul Klemper really, um, I think without them, I wonder where I would have gone. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Gordon at Vatican would have done an okay job with me, but. Just an okay job. See, there's a shot at you, Justin, right there. Yeah, it's what? No, it's not a shot. No, it's not. not what you tell. <laughs> I'm just busting chops. All right. Do you want me to, to answer these questions or can I expand on them? You can expand on them. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So let's go to number two. Who's the toughest opponent you faced in your career? Oh, that's easy. Myself. Really? Really? Yeah. I mean, isn't it? I, I, it, I have had to try to figure out how to get out of my own way so many times. Sometimes it's worked. So, sometimes it hasn't. And I have very vivid memories of shows that I've made on TV where I all but like, fell on my face. You know, like every mental – I always prided myself. And having a really strong mental game, I read the mental game books. I worked with the sports psychologist. I got, I understood it, so I should be strong. And then, and then when you get in that situation, it's just not as easy as that. It's um, like you just said, you have to fail to win. And my hardest opponent is myself. And it's getting through and really figuring out how to be, how to be me. That's a great answer. And Justin, that's the first time that answer has ever been given. Nobody's ever answered it in that direction ever. Yeah, I, I like that one. That's a little bit of a different one. That's why she is who she is, Justin. Yeah, All answer. right. Number three, and I think you answered this one earlier in the segment. Who was your role model growing up? Uh, yeah, my sister was growing right. up. Um, my grandma was really influential in my life. She got me started bowling, and she was the most positive person in my life for a very long time. Um, she, you know, she had a lot of medical and, and health issues, but she, she could have spun that into like a woe is me or being a negative person, but she was always so positive. And I know that I get a lot of my personality from my grandma buddy who got me started bowling. So Cassie, you know, and definitely my grandma buddy. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Justin, this is one of my staple questions. You are bowling the USBCs. Who is your doubles partner? And who are the other four members of your team? USBC Open or women? Yeah. Um, the Open. We'll, we'll, we'll make it open to men and women. Well, the, the, the regular it's hard because there's so many people I can't bowl with now. That is true. You know, like, I don't even have a team because the team that I want to go with, you know, so-and-so is on Team USA or so-and-so. I, like, I have a major title. So it's very difficult for me to bowl now with, with, um, with like, friend, my friends, my good friends. So – um so then lift the restrictions any four and your doubles partner go okay so without the restrictions right yes yeah, yeah okay so my doubles partner would be jason Belmonte. um my 
four on my team would be me, Jason, Norm Duke. Um, Liz Johnson, because goat. Um, hmm, who else do I want to bowl with? Do you guys want to bowl with my team? <laughs> I, I don't even belong in that. I would say <clears throat> Shannon O'Keefe. So that would be fun. That's a pretty All good right. one there. All right. That's, no, that's a good one. All right. Number five. What is your obsession with foam soap? <laughs> Nobody's ever asked me that in an interview before. Well, ever. I said any, anything goes. I told you anything goes. I mean, it's just like one of those unexplainable things where I love it. I just like the feeling of how airy it is and it's cleaning my hands and it's not like sticky. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you guys have to admit, foam soap is pretty awesome, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, I it prefer is. I foam soap over regular soap. I do too. I don't, I don't. I wouldn't say I'm obsessed with it. Like I well, can't I'm use I just enjoy it. No, I mean I, I don't use a bar soap. I always use something out of a pump. You know, yeah. like the Bath and Body Works stuff is what I'm doing. Oh, really? Well, I mean, you get like five for what, like five What's for twenty or something. I let my daughter pick them out. Okay. Let her, go, let her go with the bag, and she can just go pick whatever she wants. I don't. I don't care. Okay. I think we have. I have a cucumber melon in my sink right now. I love that. Oh, yeah. Very good. You, yeah, you like that, Justin? Don't you? Yeah, Justin. So. Proud. So I think you'll have to connect. So after you connected with Enleto on your workout routine, you should mm -hmm. connect with Deandra on what type of soaps you should buy. I'm in. <laughs> yes. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I, right. I got you. All right. Perfect. So let's go to six. Okay. Uh, rumor has it. Well, actually, it's not a rumor. I know it's a fact. Um, there's another bowler in your household who used to kick my teeth in bowling juniors for years. So uh, who's the better bowler, you or John? Um. Well, there's a couple of bowlers in my household now. I will yes, that is true. I'm correct, sorry. Correct you, Madam Bowls, even though baseball is number one. Jersey's going to be a really good bowler, I think. Yeah, so John and I met in college bowling. And I was actually not in college yet. Um, I went to watch my sister bowl and and for some reason noticed him. He was bowling for William Patterson. And I, I was not the type of girl that like scoped out guys. Like I was so focused on my bowling in school and, but I, for some reason I noticed him and, um, and then I'm just gonna tell you this really quick story. Um, uh, it was the time of like AOL chat rooms, Justin, you, you were that. there, you have no idea. What that I, means. Yeah. I wouldn't know that. That was the but dialogue. My, Dial up. Because, yeah, dial up. It was like you've got mail, and you well, have to use, and you kind of go over the minutes either. You have like so many minutes free per month. Yeah. Uh, well, yep. one one day I was like in my basement at home, and somebody chatted me from a screen name I didn't know, and they're just like, "Aren't you Cassie's sister?" And I hated that, and I was like, "It's actually Deandra. Who's this?" And he's like, oh, it's John from William Patterson. And I was like, oh, my God, he knows who I am. I was a senior in high school, and I was like, Pfft. I, like, ran up my stairs. I'm like, Mom, that boy that I pointed out at that collegiate tournament knows who I am. And he'd seen me in Bowling Die Dress because I just won the Alberta Eco Star tomorrow and something else. And, I like, there was a, t a page dedicated to me. So he saw me. He's like, oh, I just want to congratulate you. And I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Um, and he was rookie of the year in college. He was a collegiate rookie of the year at William Patterson and then transferred to Nebraska. So when you ask me who is the better bowler, um, I am because I'm doing it for a living. And, um, but he has always been so good. In fact, it's kind of frustrating when he doesn't bowl for a very long time and then I'll practice or if I'm coaching somebody, he'll be there with the kids and he'll just literally in his street shoes, grab a ball off the rack and throw it. And like, he has such a good touch. He is so effortless, and I think a lot of people don't realize that he did bowl because mm -hmm. uh, I think they know of him as, like, a chef now, but he gets it. And anytime he's behind me at a tournament, I bowl well because he understands my game and my equipment, and um, he's a good bowler, Mike, but I'm a mm -hmm. better bowler. He is a good player, and he was always a good player. All right, so let's go to seven. Um, you can have dinner with any three celebrities or athletes, living or dead. Who's at your table? Yeah, Michael Jordan. Because um, did you watch? The, did you, Did you watch the last? Did I? I figured you did. We were like hanging by every word. It was like my even my son Madden was like super into it. I remember 
when they won that and how crazy Chicago was in the early 90s. And I remember going to games and watching Michael Jordan play live. Like it was, yeah. uh, it was amazing to be able to say that. Um, so Michael Jordan, um, because he was crazy, right? When you watch that, you understood how he got to be like the legend that he is because he was a little bit crazy. He was so obsessed with winning and that's why he won, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Oh man, okay, two other athletes. Um, or, or celebrities, entertainers, or, oh, or celebrities, any? Oprah. Oprah. I would, I would love yeah. to hang with Oprah. And I think Ellen would be a really fun time. Ellen's a blast. Yeah. So I'm gonna scrap number we eight. Have a gonna, weird table. That's, that's all right. So I'm gonna, Justin. I'm gonna take eight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you another one. So you said Michael Jordan. Yeah. So he was crazy. Like that. Those ten episodes. Like he was nuts. Like I, Justin. I don't think you watched it, but he was just. Uh, Justin, insane. you have to yeah. watch it. Even people your age that didn't get to see him play, like they played the game so differently than how they play basketball now. Like it was so rough, right? Yeah, it was real. Like they didn't care and whatnot. So, who would you say the Michael Jordan is of bowling with that has that that mindset? I mean, is it you? No, it's not me. I'm not trying to be the best in, like ever. It's Jason. It is Jason. I mean, hands down, like he's just as obsessed. You know, he that's why he wins, and he has that confidence, uh, not arrogance. Confidence where he goes into a tournament and he doesn't doubt that he's going to win it, and that's why he wins a lot of them. So we, we, have to, we have to get him on here, Justin. We got to work on getting him on. Oh, right. here. I think okay. for sure. Come on, you know, I think we might know somebody <laughs> and we might be yeah. talking to him. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll, we'll talk after the after we're done yeah. recording today. All right, so and we'll do it a little bit later in the night so we don't wake yeah, him yeah, up yeah. too early. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's go to nine. So, Matt and Jersey are getting into bowling. Mm -hmm. let's say they really want to follow mom's footsteps. They really want to make this like their career. What advice are you going to give to your kids to be the next Deandra? Oh, I think it's not, I would never tell them to be the next me. I would say to be all of them and to not, you know, don't do something because somebody else found success, do it, but do it because your heart is telling you that's what you should be doing. Because if we all like tune in to what our heart is saying, like we are drawn to certain things. And for Madden, I think it'll be baseball and I will be right there behind him cheering him on. And um, and there's a lot of money in baseball. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like I follow I followed your kids like from the beginning on Instagram. I watched oh, them. Really with, cool. I, I, my daughter's almost nine, so I've, they're almost the same age. I'm like, yeah. there he is with the baby, and then he plays Little League and now yeah. with everything. So I feel like I've seen the like the, the, the yeah. path of life from your kid that's awesome. He's got the touch. Although lately he's been playing basketball outside our house because we've been home a lot and he's like getting really good. I mean, he's, you know, he's a big kid for his age. So he, I think he's going to, I think he'll be taller than John and John's six foot. So that'll be interesting. But I think my advice to my kids is, um, is just be them 100% be authentic and do what you love. Because I feel like if you do what you love in life, the money will find you, right? Mm -hmm. You can't do things because of the money. You don't go into a job and you're like, I'm going to take this job because it's this much money. Because if you do that, you're going to be miserable. But if you make a decision in your life based on how it makes you feel, then the money finds you. Exactly. People do it backwards. Yeah. People do a lot of things backwards. The yeah. smart All people right. do. The smart people do. All right. So I got my last one. So your resume is just, it's stupid good. I mean, let's just call it spade a spade. It's, just, it's ridiculous. If there's one title you would want to add and scratch off your bucket list, uh, what is it? Yeah. The U.S. Open. Uh, I would love to, to win the U.S. Open. But, you know, Liz always wins it. So how is anybody else going to win it? <laughs> how, does she, how does she do it every year? I mean, that's amazing. Because she's amazing. And oh, she's she she the best ever. And she's so, like, cool and so chill and, like, she, you know, like she channels everybody gets nervous right and mm -hmm. she just like is able to to figure that out and i it's been an honor to bowl with her on team usa too and to learn from her that's awesome well my 10 are done miss deandra you survived my wrath of 10 that's easy i thought they were yeah, no 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 i'm not that's not that bad justin okay. another one survives <laughs> yeah we haven't killed anyone and I won't say yet, but not yet. <laughs> we won't get there. No. Deandra, 
Thank you for the time today. It was a pleasure sitting with you and finally meeting with you. So one more time, plug everything you got going on, where our listeners can find you and all your new adventures. And Yeah, thank you. Way. First of all, thank you guys for having me on. It means a lot to me. I know that you guys can get anybody, you know, like you guys are doing something really great for bowling. All you have to do is just, you know, send an invitation out to bowlers and they'll come on. And for you to reach out to me means a lot to me. So I just want you to know that. And I love what you're doing. I'll continue to support you. And, and make sure that my people also know about what you're doing. Um, Beyondthelanes.com, check it out right now. Follow me on Instagram at Deandra's Beatty and on Facebook, um, you can find me there. I've done three TikToks. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, Justin, are you on TikTok? No. <gasps> it's where all the kids are. And I was like, well, I gotta go where the kids are. So you should check out my TikToks because they're, well, the first one's super funny. I'll and let Sydney and Brennan know. Justin, <laughs> Justin does have a new video coming out, though. What is oh, it? yes, I do. Like I forgot video, to talk a, about that. A music video? No, 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 no. I have – so, like, I've started my YouTube channel at, like, the beginning of the year. Around the same time we started this. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing vlogs and stuff of tournaments. And, well, that hasn't been able to happen. So, we actually went up to Doug and Chrissy's. We were there for three weeks. And I was able to film a video on the last day we were there. PBA impersonations. Oh yes! Who'd you do? Are you are you gonna say or are you gonna just drop I'll, it? I'll say, I have a pretty good Pete Weber impersonation, <laughs> and that that's all I gotta say because well, I used to I used to bowl um, the U.S. Open, the men's U.S. Open uh, every year. It was at Carol Air. and yep. I rem I have such vivid memories of seeing you guys watching your dad bowl and you were so little and you were just so hanging on to every single frame that he bowled and I just I loved that you know I loved that and then I remember bringing my son once when I when I had my son I would bring him to and, and he couldn't really watch me because he was too little but I just I thought in my head I'm like I can't wait until my kids can kind of cheer me on from the back too so I think that's cool that I've been able to watch you guys grow up too it's it's yeah. fun when you look back on the memories and you're like, darn it, I used to be able to – Dad used to give me rides on his bowling bags when I was, like, <laughs> five. Yeah. But, and now, are you taller than him? Uh, Not quite. Brandon, Brandon passed him by a mile and a half, so. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. So, you know, they had, they had a good one. They were on a show today really quick, and they did mm -hmm. a – family did a show, and they asked them what would the lineup be for a bone team on the lanes. Uh, that was a good question, jo uh, Justin. That, what was that it? was a pretty good one. Did you agree? So I agreed with me being the leadoff. Uh, Dad said mom second and Sydney third. I would flip them. Mm -hmm. I would have Sydney second and mom third. And then their coin flip was between if Brandon was the anchor or if dad was the anchor. <laughs> they were going on something hard. Dad was the anchor, no doubt. Yeah. If they, if they were going on something where the earth was flat and the left was walled, mm -hmm. Brandon was the anchor because he just throws it. And because when he hits the head pin and that head pin comes flying across, it hits harder than his than dad's does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's younger. Yeah. So yeah. That, that was the lineup. That's awesome. What a great question. Yeah, well, so, uh, Mike, is that going to, you have any more or are we going to wrap this one up? Let's wrap it up. All right. I, I, Thank I, you guys I, for I, 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 dance, I dance class tonight, Justin. What? 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 We have dance class. Uh, yes, Daniela has uh, lyrical at six p.m. So I will oh, be doing. Oh, your daughter. Class. Yep, I will be doing dance can class. Can you? Tonight. Can you do it? Can you dance lyrical? Um, oh, not so cool. much the lyrical. Uh, she does lyrical tap, jazz, and acro. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I kind of do some of the uh, some of the dances with her. Um, yeah. She she does the TikToks, but I have already told her that I will never go on TikTok with her. We are, <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah, so that's probably going to stop as of tonight. Um, I'm sure we'll be doing TikToks and Justin will find it. It is like a rabbit hole because I'm actually kind of studying it because there are a lot of businesses that are now going to TikTok. So I really want to understand like followers and like how it's working. So I've been really studying it. It's really not what I thought it was. It's not just kids dancing. Like, not on my thread because I'm seeking out different things, more entrepreneurial. You're, you're professional, more professional. Yeah, more like marketing and things mm -hmm. like that. So it's uh, interesting. But my kids love it and they've, they've been watching it. Oh, yeah. They're obsessed with it. She's obsessed with it. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not dancing. And Justin, if Justin ever found a TikTok of me dancing, it would be all over the internet within 30 seconds. And <laughs> yeah, Dad, 
dad did one and it was shown they do a show on friday nights and it was shown on friday and i think dad regretted it as soon as that question was brought up oh man well thanks again for having me it was super fun thank you so much andrew we will be back on thursday with bill o'neill on it will be fun well, no, we'll, we'll have a, a different kind of time with him. Although he is really funny. I've known Bill since college, like since before college. Yeah. yeah Bill, Bill, Bill used to beat my brains in the JVTs as well. He's, um, <laughs> no, the, 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 the Mike uh, parade of getting his teeth beat in with guests are just going to keep flowing along. <laughs> Your husband, Bill O'Neill. Um, and do we have anything lined up for next week, Justin, or no? Um, do we want to share the news of our big guests, or we, do we want to just say we're the big guests next week? Guests. Well, well no, you were this well. week. Oh. <laughs> no, no, go ahead, Justin. Let it fly really quick. We got a couple. All seconds. right. So next Thursday, we are going to have the highest of high that you can get at Brunswick. Corey Dykstra will be on next Thursday. Nice. Next Thursday night, June 4th. Put it on your calendar. Mark it down. 6 p.m. And it is definitely going to be a good time with Mr. Dykstra. Yeah. So we will be there. Uh, we were working on it, and this is my dancer. She's gonna say hi. Hi. And she. Have fun she, in dance class. She said, "Have fun in dance class." What? She said, "Have fun in dance class." I will. She wanted to get into the into a show, so she got into her show. We're good. So we're good. Deandra, thank you so much for joining us, Justin. Let's wrap it up. And all right, thanks, Deandra. Thank you guys for watching Stay on safe. our Facebook page. Please be sure to hit that like button, follow our page, and get those reminders when we always go live. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel so you always know. But that's it from the Bone and Zano Zone. I'm Justin Bone, my partner, Mike Val. Thank you, DeAndre Asbady, so much for your time today. Stay and safe. We are always on the lanes, off the charts, and on the mic. Take care, everybody, and stay safe. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>